You know, I know uh, there's a, a very famous uh, anti-war activist. It was one of the Berrigan priests. And, uh, and, and he made this real valuable statement. He's, he was talking about peace. And he said, there's no peace because there's no peacemakers. And what he meant is that is we who want peace, we who want to change, do not go to the same places where those who are wanting not peace, for example, like they go to war, they put things at risk, and we are, we who do not go those places, because to, to be wholeheartedly, we have to at least be as agitating, we have to at least put ourselves at risk. We have to at least be willing to die. Because, you know, we, we have all these wars and we send our children over to wars, but yet when it comes time to, you know, to, to, to stopping the pollution or stopping a chemical plant from literally destroying your town and buying you off, it's like, we don't want to get arrested. It's like, oh. It's like, you know, where is it that we're willing to put our children at risk, but we're not even willing so much as to put our name at risk, our job at risk, spend the day in jail? I, I, I don't know. So it's, it's when, we, when we are not willing to commit ourselves to that, then we are doing things half-heartedly, and no wonder it seems that we are going backwards instead of forward. If we go a step forward, there's two steps backwards. And so, you know, I, you know, maybe it's just coming from the state of Texas that everything seems so desperate and willing to be destroyed out there. And, uh, you know, I, I know one of my, uh, probably one of my most, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, kind of shock and awe I ever did was when I was, I was trying to get a chemical plant to totally recycle their waste stream. And, and you know, if, if you were educated, you would say, oh, Diane, that's totally impossible. There is no such thing as zero discharge, and these chemical ca plants can't afford it, and, you know, and that was a part of the 1972 Clean Water Act, but we're so far beyond that, and, and that's totally impossible. But I started asking for zero discharge. I started demanding zero discharge. I said it was a part of the Clean Water Act, zero toxins by 1985, so why aren't we doing it? And it took me five years, three hunger strikes, and I finally took my own shrimp boat out on top of their discharge and proceeded to sink it on top of that discharge point. And do you know, I got zero discharge from that company. And uh, not only did I get, not only did I get zero discharge from that company, you know, and I know a lot of people say, well, well you know, Diane, that's like five years, three hunger strikes, lost shrimp bow, got a divorce, lost your house, lost your house. It's like, you know, that's a little much to be sacrificed. And, and, and the thing of it was, is that, I remember I walked up to Alcoa Aluminum, which was the chemical plant right next door to Formosa, and it was also the reason why we were number one in the nation for toxins. I walked into their office. I didn't call and ask for a meeting. I just walked into his office and I said, now, do we do this zero discharge thing or do we do this other thing? And you know, it took them about 15 minutes and they said, uh, we'll do the zero discharge thing. So, so I, I, I just, if, if, if I have uh, anything I ever have to say to people, and it's, and it's not to go zero discharge, it's not to fight chemical plants or Formosa or, or pick up my cause, is that individual people make the difference. It is not the elected official that is ahead leading the way. The heroes are you people and that do not ever underestimate the power that you have. And also, we are much too well behaved and we need to be uh, very unreasonable. And so uh, anyway, that's pretty much what I gotta say.
Well, I tell you what, what was actually uh, a surprising, surprisingly, because like I said, uh, sometimes when I do actions, believe it or not, I, and you might already suspect this, is they're, they're not always well planned out. I tend to move from my gut and then just see where it goes. And so when I, when I did the action to sink my boat on top of that discharge point, it's like I, I removed the engine of my boat. And, and, and the engine was a 671 diesel, so it was, it was a pretty good engine. And, and, and so I, I connived this shrimper to pull me out in the middle of the bay in the dead of the night because nobody wanted to be seen with me. So I went in the dead of the night to sink it up on top of this discharge pipe, and lo and behold, uh, the, the Coast Guard got wind of it. So I was met at midnight in the middle of the bay with three boatloads of Coast Guard, and they called me a terrorist on the high seas and that I was going to get 15 years in the federal penitentiary. And because I was a terrorist, they said. But, but the thing of it was, this is a surprising thing, is that I was doing the action because I was so outraged at what was going on. Agencies didn't care. Politicians didn't care. Nobody cared. And so I was sinking the boat. But the fishermen who had up to that point been very reserved, their uh, fishermen are usually very uh, conservative. They believe, uh, especially down in Texas on the southern Gulf states, is they fishermen believe their days are limited. They believe their their last nail is being nailed in their coffin, and so they do not believe that you can change anything. That and they just want to spend their last days on the bay. But they sit and watch my interaction with the Coast Guard. They saw them confiscating my boat, trying to haul me in, and something touched those fishermen at a place where they lived, and every single fisherman got on their boat and went out in that bay in front of that chemical plant and did a demonstration. And, and, and I don't know whether you know it, but it is illegal to be having a little demonstration out in the middle of a ship channel in front of a chemical plant. And, and so the Coast Guard was, went like crazy because like you, they had about 30 or 40 boats out there in the middle of the bay doing this wild demonstration. And, and it was totally unexpected. I could never have planned something like that. It's like leaving it open, trust in the universe, step out there. And, uh, and like I said, it was, it was actually that participation spontaneous participation by those shrimpers that was what caused that chemical plant to give me zero discharge because it was like once you got the community is like you you've lost it and so that's how I won that battle and it was a surprising group action I uh, didn't plan it at all yeah uh absolutely well, well I still live in Cedar if I know people are always surprised that I'm still in Cedar. If, uh, I know I go into uh, California and they, they can't believe I'm going back to Texas. They're like, why are you going back to that hell hole? And it's like, where, you know, well, that's where the battle is. And uh, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, is it started out just in my backyard. But, but since I have been doing this thing over the last 20 years, I have been to India and worked with the Bhopal uh, tragedy over there. I have been to Taiwan. I have been to Beirut. I have been to Baghdad. I have been to Jordan. And I was a lady by age 40 who probably hadn't been out of the county line. My family's been there 100 years. It's been, they've been fishermen with their gill netters and shrimpers. And uh, now the town is dead. It's, it's the fisheries are gone. It's up. Uh, and the thing was, when I was when I was maybe in my 30s and growing up in it, I never in my life thought I would see the end in my lifetime. I mean, it's like a farmer seeing a healthy farm, and you just cannot believe that suddenly you'll be have left the farm and you're living on a city suburb street. You just you cannot believe that, and I could not believe it. But in my lifetime, in my, my, even the last 15 years of my life, uh, my town is dead. It's, there's, 
you know, that we used to have 100 boats. We might have four. You might have four boats, and the fish houses are gone. It's, uh, and it's sad because uh, fishing is not just an occupation. It's a way of life. It's, it's a whole way of being. We see ourselves, even after all these years, people ask me what, how I want to be identified, and it's like, I'm a fisherwoman. I, I really am. <laughs> Why do you think that sinking the boat moved the company to change? Uh, uh, well, uh, typically, well, 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 the 1972 Clean Water Act said zero emissions by 1985, right? Go read the Clean Water Act. That's what it said. But it does not say that anymore. So now it's like you talk to a chemical plant, you talk to their corporate people. One time I did a conference on the uh, Gulf of Mexico Foundation. It was real fancy, real fancy. And believe it or not, I was doing a talk on zero discharge, and they gave me the strangest audience because it was nothing but chemical managers. And that was the most hostile group of people. And I remember they were, they were talking, they were like, what is she talking about, zero discharge? It's like, is it theory? Is it pie in the sky? They thought that was the stupidest you know, presentation to be talking about zero discharge, but there actually is zero discharge types of technology that can recycle the waste stream. You, you can do that. And matter of fact, the premier expert in it was at Penn State, Dr. Jack Matson, and he was uh, a creative environmental engineer, and he said he could make any chemical plant do zero emissions and what we were betting on and, and, and this is the way we after I did my stunts this is the way you got them because we said we have to prove we can do uh, uh, make it economically feasible and environmentally superior and they're like oh well they're not gonna be able to prove that so 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 they ended up agreeing to, to do the study with us but when you have uh, an expert, a zero discharge expert like Dr. Jack Matson, is like, you get to zero discharge. So that's how I got Formosa. And actually, like I said, any chemical plant can be custom fitted for zero emissions. And, and the reason why zero emissions was out there was not because they were trying to get rid of toxins. It was because in other of these Arabian countries where there was no water, it was a way to conserve the water because that is one of the benefits of zero emissions is that you will like have almost like distillate water as one of your your byproducts. So so that's how I got zero discharge. And, and, and the other way they do it is just they just discharge into the bay. They you know they have every in in my county. Every single chemical plant, and we probably had like six, had the equivalent at least of five million gallons per day of toxins going into a bay. And you know, and these were estuaries. They were not like in the Gulf of Mexico. They were estuaries, sometimes as low as four feet of water. So you got all these chemical plants. Five million, and for most of the one I fought hardest, had 17 million gallons per day going in. That's what they do. And they say, as long as you got a permit, you can only do so much this, so much this. It's, it's modeled, it's carrying load. It's like, what do we think that bay can hold? And that's what they do. And there, it's all self-reporting, so if they violate, well, they turn it in themselves. That's, that's the other option. Or you can do injection wells, which was another thing we were really number one on, is or third in the nation on. It's like, you put your waste into like a deep, deep, deep hole, and you prove by your scientists that that waste is not going to go anywhere for 2,000 years. And yes, they do it all the time. So